Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. And this morning I'm looking at a book which comes to us from LexisNexis and Family Law, which was the old Jordan's publishing uh, company. Uh, they've taken on this title. It's called Surrogacy, uh, Law Practice and Policy in England and Wales. Uh, surrogacy, of course, being a very controversial area within family law and, of course, politically. The book's been written by a number of people, and I do apologise in advance if I uh, pronounce their names incorrectly. Ruth Cabeza, Victoria Flowers, Erwin uh, Piero, or Perot, I'm not sure how that's pronounced, Anita Rao, Barry O'Leary, and Lillian Adoes. I'd like to thank them all very much indeed for producing this work. Elizabeth and I talked about the book and she was the lead writer on this uh, title. Um, we've given our, our title for the review, The Difficult and Controversial Subject of Surrogacy, Law, Procedure and uh, Pro Policy, Brilliantly Explained. Let's have a look at the book first of all. There we go. Interesting uh, front cover with a picture. We've got the... Um, Slide there, it's fine. And then on the back, you can see there's quite a lot of information. It has the, the, the name of the people and then it has some detail. It's a small book, it's a paperback. It runs to just over 200 pages. The index is a short one on paragraph numbering again. Very much the house style for Lexis and many, many publications today. Um, what you've then got is a whole series of quite useful information at the back. If we go to the front of the book, you can see the names of the people, the title. Then you've got uh, a little bit of blurb about the book. Then you've got um, a forward by Mrs. Justice Thies. Um, I call her Thies J in the title, which is the title there. But that's a little bit old fashioned. But it's Mrs. Justice Thies anyway. And she wrote the um, forward in March 2018. And it's quite detailed. <clears throat> because it gives some idea of, of what we're talking about. There's some acknowledgements, starting with Ruth uh, Cabeza and the co-authors, and it lists uh, how the book was actually brought into being. Then it has a list of the biographical information to cover the uh, barrister's concerns. So Ruth, Victoria, Owen and Anita all come from field court chambers. Barry is a partner in Wesley um, Greig Solicitors and Lillian is a family court advisor for Kafkas, and a very, very important role that is too. There's the content section. You can see the various chapters listed. It's quite a detailed content section, in all told. <coughs> and we just run through, you can see again there. Then after that you get... Uh, we, we have a total, in fact, of um, nine chapters. The last one being the case for surrogacy law reform. Well, there's always a need to reform as, as people's views and, and situations change. Then there are a number of appendices at the back plus the index. Then, of course, you've got the usual cases which are set out. Not that many of them, of course, in this area. Table of statutes, again, always very useful. And then after that, I just get the book open. Statutory instruments there. And then after that, we get into the book itself. You see how the, the chapter is structured. There's an introduction, and then it's paragraph numbering on the side. And of course, there are footnotes, and that's the way it runs all the way through opening it in the middle. Let's say, say, just over 200 odd pages and a relatively short book, but an important one, certainly for family law practitioners. So what do we say? Well, Elizabeth and I talked about it, as I've indicated, and we said surrogacy, the very word engenders all kinds of comments, questions and uncertainties, making this area of law both challenging and fascinating, particularly as the issues that often emerge in surrogacy arrangements extend across a wide range of legal and other professional disciplines. Despite its challenges, surrogacy has become, in the opinions expressed in this excellent and authoritative legal text, quote, a significant alternative to family, family planning, as, for several reasons, opportunities for adoption continue to dwindle. And that, of course, is uh, it's never really discussed. It's a political issue again. There's the original Adoption Act, but it is actually quite hard to adopt children. And there don't seem to be any real changes on the way to alter that. 
putting it bluntly. So therefore, you've got other, other things to look for. Now, this book has been recently published by LexisNexis in their Family Law series, derived originally from the Jordan uh, publishing uh, group's uh, approach. And of course, the Family Law series itself is extremely important both to the bench and to practitioners. And this book presents us as practitioners with a thorough, judicious, carefully researched and clearly written examination of the law, procedure and policy relating to assisted reproduction, or AR, and surrogacy. And in so doing, it answers, we think, a lot of the questions that commonly arise. So what exactly is surrogacy? When and where is it legal? And when and where is it not legal? Queries like these obviously top the list, which is a long one, especially for lawyers asked to advise clients planning to embark on a surrogacy arrangement. And predictably, there are no simple answers as surrogacy and or assisted reproduction take several different forms in different circumstances. But broadly, as defined by co-author Ruth Kabeza, surrogacy involves conception with the intention, quote, that the woman who carries and gives birth to the child will not be the child's mother. She's always going to be, of course, the biological mother, but she's not going to bring the child up. That's the basis of it. Reference, of course, is made here to the ghastliness of Margaret Atwood's 1986 novel called The Handmaid's Tale, the horrors of which can now be avoided, or can they, as assisted reproduction via IVF becomes increasingly common so that surrogates can successfully conceive without even meeting the biological father. Uh, it could well be the shape of things to come because this is certainly stuff of science fiction in the past and it seems that it's catching up with us, putting it bluntly. But certainly that's a position we're now in. And I, I've had cases, I'm sure you have, where the um, one of the parties, normally the father, um, obviously, generally speaking, the father never actually meets or sees uh, the child, which is the product of their um, relationship. So it's, it's a sad um, state of affairs, but obviously the law must come in at some stage. The danger, of course, with this sort of approach here is that a totalitarian state could introduce an element of compulsion into any aspect of reproduction. And that's always, again, been at the f in the back of the minds of many of the sci-fi writers of the past. And as I've said, um, the, f the reality is catching up with us. And in the United Kingdom, of course, altruistic and compensated surrogacy is legal. Commercial surrogacy, usually arranged through a profit-making organisation, is not. That's the difference. There appears to be a fine line of demarcation, though, between these arrangements, of which lawyers should be aware. And this intrinsic difficulty is discussed in detail in the book. And I think it's of great help to anybody who's involved or affected by this particular subject matter. Certainly, the aim of the authors, all experts in this field, has been to bring together in one place all the information that a surrogate or intended parent would need to understand before embarking on a surrogacy arrangement in the United Kingdom. And the intention here is to ensure that the relationship between the intended parents and the child will be recognised for the purposes of English law. And that's the legal bit. In other words, it, it's a recognition point that it is legal. And to this end, then, the current legal framework in the United Kingdom receives a comprehensive thorough and yet concise examination and that's and I think one of the first books I've really seen that deals with this subject in this way. Now writing in the Ford, Mrs Justice Thies commends the book as quote a very valuable contribution to this area of law for both lawyers and those who are considering entering into these arrangements. Well said. Lawyers especially I think will appreciate the book's humane and sensible approaches one we have to adopt anyway at the family law bar um, because it's got a logical structure and I think the research references are very helpful. There's of course the inclusion of tables of cases, statutes and statutory instruments and of course the five appendices which give a lot of factual information for you. So let me conclude. As a convenient new source of information and advice on a sensitive and controversial subject. Elizabeth and I certainly feel this book will be invaluable 
to members involved in family law proceedings. And the date of publication is cited at the 22nd of March 2018. Now here's the book again, paperback as I said, and then the spine and then the back. You can see it's a lot of information, a lot of information in it. I think it's very well set out. Uh, again, you can see the paragraph numbering and there's a certain amount of footnoting. Not too much, having said that, there's quite a lot on those two pages. But I think whatever your views, and you have to put aside some of the opinions you may have for uh, whatever reasons, political, religious or whatever, um, ethical, uh, I think this book is an important statement on where we are at the moment. Uh, so a big thank you to everybody. And I'd, I'd particularly like to thank Lexis and the Family Law title imprint uh, for the fact that you're continuing with these publications because they do make our lives a lot easier. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.